Most traders obsess over delta and theta, but there's another Greek that can crush your PL when the markets get volatile, and that's Vega. If you're an option seller, ignoring Vega risk could cost you big time when markets get volatile. In this video, we're going to explain exactly what Vega risk is, why it matters, and how to hedge it effectively. So let's get started. Just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is generally in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. Vega shows how much an options price changes with a 1% move in implied volatility. Positive Vega gains when IV rises and negative Vega loses. Option sellers often carry negative Vega. Things like credit spreads, condors, and cash secured puts all have negative Vega. Think of Vega as sensitivity to market fear. So why does it matter? Well, Vega risk appears during earnings or market shocks. So think about when we get a geopolitical risk, some sort of negative announcement in the market, volatility spikes, that's going to impact anyone who's selling options. Many option sellers get hit hard during these vol spikes. Let's talk about how to monitor Vega exposure. First, you need to know your Vega. Most brokers are going to show position and portfolio Vega. Interactive Brokers is really good at doing this with their Risk Navigator platform. Check daily your total Vega. Are you net long or short volatility? Your ticker level Vega is your risk too concentrated in one particular underlying and any expiring clustering. Do you have a lot of trades that are near earnings or Fed announcements? Short Vega works fantastically in calm markets, but is dangerous when IV is low and ready to pop higher. So going over to Risk Navigator, we can see here just a sample portfolio I've got set up. Overall, we've got a lot of negative Vega. Every single position has negative Vega. We're going to talk about how to hedge this in a minute. But all of these are things like credit spreads, condors, cash secured puts. They all have negative Vega. So we can monitor this on a position by position basis and also at the portfolio level. If your portfolio has too much negative Vega, you can balance it out by adding some positive Vega positions. These include long straddles or strangles, calendars or diagonals, VIX call options, and volatility ETFs like VXX or UVXY. I would recommend these for short-term use only. If you go and have a look at a long-term chart of these uh, products, you'll understand why. These positive Vega positions act a little bit like insurance against a vol spike. If IV spikes, your hedge gains value and cushions the blow for any losses that you might be suffering on any other positions. Let's go and take a look. So going back to our sample portfolio, I'm going to go and add a long strangle on SPY. We're going to go out to March next year. So that's about six months to expiry. And we're going to go at about the 20 delta on each strike, the put and the calls. So if we add a couple of those, you can see here we've added significant positive vega. Now, if we go back to our overall portfolio, we haven't impacted our delta too much. We've added a little bit of positive delta here, but overall we've added 260 positive Vega, which is more than offsetting all our negative Vega on all the other positions. And we're not sacrificing too much in the way of theta, just $12 a day. And overall the total portfolio has still got positive Vega. Within Risk Navigator, we can run something called a custom scenario. And it's not going to be perfectly accurate, but it'll give you a little bit of an idea of how the portfolio might perform if there's a volatility spike. So what I've done here is I've just gone with a blanket 10% increase in volatility across all underlyings. And you can see here, our unrealized PL has gone from 235 to 516. We've actually made money through this move. Most of these positions are losing a little bit of money, but our SPY hedge has made a significant profit. Without that hedge, we would have lost money overall. So that hedge is really helping us in the event of the vol spike. Again, we're assuming everything else stays the same. The price of all the underlyings, the only thing we're changing here is the volatility. The other thing you can do is diversify your trade structures. So you don't necessarily want to run 100% short vol trades. You want to blend in trades with neutral or positive Vega. So think about that portfolio that we were initially looking at. Lots of credit spreads, condors and cash secured puts, all negative Vega. If we add in a few calendar spreads, some long straddles and strangles, we're neutralizing or, or hedging some of our Vega risk. The key is to aim for a balance. You don't necessarily have to aim for zero Vega. You just want to have a bit of a balance over your portfolio as a whole. Strategy number three is to avoid overexposure near earnings. So short puts or calls into earnings can be a bit of a Vega trap. If you are going to trade earnings, use a small position size, define risk, or add some hedge with long straddles or VIX calls. Better yet, roll or close before the earnings event. Another thing you can do is to use VIX products to hedge your Vega. You can use things like VIX futures, VIX call options, 
And again, we could use VXX or UVXY. Remember that's short-term use only. You could take a look at out of the money VIX call options with around 30 to 60 days to expiration. They're gonna spike if the market panics, offsetting any short premium losses. Here we've added some VIX call options for the November expiry at the 17 strike. So let's take a look at how the custom scenario looks now. Here we can see if volatility spikes 10% across the board again, our unrealized PL in total hasn't changed too much. We've made about $187 on those VIX call options, offsetting any losses elsewhere. Again, this custom scenario isn't perfect, it's not exact, but it will give you a good idea of how the portfolio might perform based on different vol spikes. And again, you can change these vol spikes to whatever percentage you like. Here's a simple routine to manage Vega risk on a daily basis. Check your total Vega across your whole portfolio. Scan for exposure clusters in certain tickers or expiries. Make sure there's no single position with too big of an exposure in terms of the Vega. Check out IV rank. Are you selling into complacency? Are you selling lots of options when the IV rank is really low? So double check that. You can also add some hedges if IV is low. And I generally look at the VIX. So when the VIX is really, really low, that's when I'm going to start thinking about adding some Vega hedges. Just like with Delta and Theta, monitoring Vega should be part of your daily process. You don't have to fear Vega, but you do have to respect it. Hedging isn't about removing risk, but smoothing the equity curve and avoiding large drawdowns. Adding positive Vega is like insurance. You hope you don't need it, but when vol erupts, it can save your account. Thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments below. Reach out anytime with questions and have a great day.